there is a d grave danger here that the minister is being given extensive powers to apply to any market, any entry, entity or facility, privately or state-owned, anywhere in the transport sector. Draft legislation put forward by government is seeking to consolidate the regulation of the transport sector into a single super regulator. But the transport industry has some concerns about this. Joining me to discuss these issues is Nick Poré. He is the director of the Freight Logistics Association and a transport economist with many decades of experience in the industry. Nick Poré, welcome to the Center for Risk Analysis. Thank you very much. Yes, good morning, David. We are very concerned about the terms of this bill because it is ill-defined, very broad-ranging, and has very significant potential implications for freight logistics in South Africa. So, Nick, before we dive into the legislation, could you give us some background information about the transport sector, uh, freight logistics, uh, rail, etc.? How have these industries been regulated in the past? David, it, I would like first to just give a broad overview of the historical build-up to the current situation. Uh, from, but, well, from the beginning of South African economic development, railways had a monopoly, which goes back 100 years, for all long-distance transport. This was repealed in the 1980s and road freight were deregulated and allowed to compete with the railways. The railway has, was told to maintain itself free of support from the fiscus to stay sustainable and to focus on profitability, which it did very effectively, effectively cut out all non or break bulk commodities, closed stations, sidings, all means of accessibility for anything but bulk cargo. This meant, and this was done with the advice of international consultants on how to make a railway profitable. The result is that the railway has attempted to fill this mandate for the last 30 years, due to all sorts of circumstances and lack of support by its owner, the South African government, the railway is virtually collapsed at the moment and does not offer adequate service for industry. Um, bulk services have reduced. The mines are not getting the service that they require. There is a continual mantra to transfer from road freight to rail, but it is totally impractical because the railways do not supply the services. So we have a situation where we have an economy which is struggling because of government monopoly, non-provision of services at ports, at railways, pipeline, and rail, the air transport um, subsidiary. The result is that the private sector has had to expand and take over and is now performing the functions of railways in, to a large extent. The volumes of heavy bulk freight vehicles on the road is, go, is rising rapidly. While the railways were being so it's reportedly impacted by COVID, the freight transport slipped into the breach. And in fact, the volumes increased during the COVID period because they were supplementing rail. Enjoying this analysis? Click here to sign up for our 30-day free trial for more content from the CIA. So Nick, let's look more closely at this economic regulation of transport bill. What are some of the specific issues, red flags, that you as the Freight Logistics Association have raised in your submission to Parliament? The problem with it is that it fails to specify which transport it is going to regulate. 
and implies that it will regulate anything from a donkey cart to a freight train, then it fails to give any clue as to what it will regulate. It makes assertions that it is necessary for economic regulation of transport facilities and services. Now, this is globular. It gives no in indica indications of what is to be regulated and why. Legislation is supposed to have an element of consistency and transparency and proportionality and accountability. People should know what is supposed to be going to be regulated before just accepting regulation. Then there is no indication of what objectives are to be achieved by this regulation, which again is contrary to the tenets of good regulation. There must be an objective and there must be a clear relationship between the regulation and the objective without any unintended consequences. The fact that this is being launched by the Department of Transport doesn't give any comfort because there are shards of information of regulation which have been issued by the department which are ignored because they're impractical or, or contradictory or fail to address critical issues with freight transport because the department does not um, respond to the needs of industry. So there is a grave danger here that the minister is being given extensive powers to apply to any market, any entry, entity or facility, privately or state-owned, anywhere in the transport sector. Economic regulations, which include ability to limit charges, to influence costs, to make decisions which are, should I say, naive. If you fiddle with charges, supply, and the services in the logistics industry, the immediate effect is to regulate and therefore restrict industrial performance. The freight sector is a servant of industry. There is no other justification for having transport, freight, and logistics except to provide for that facet of industrial production. So anything that is intended that will fiddle with the laws of supply and demand will fiddle with the quantity of transport supplied is gravely dangerous to commerce and industry. Nick, what would be a more appropriate way to regulate the transport sector? The bill needs to be returned for um, rewriting and in particularly subjected to um, regulatory, regulatory processes, it, it, an assessment of the regulatory process, because it, in its present form, it doesn't achieve any of the objectives that I've talked about, and it does leave far too many loose ends and wide-ranging um, powers to unspecified authorities to achieve unspecified objectives, including some continuation of the social development objectives of government, which have no place in an economic regulatory bill. Okay, so those social requirements are, for example, transformation of the sector. There is a, a clause which suggests that the bill will be used to achieve equality to measures designed to advance persons or categories of persons historically disadvantaged by unfair discrimination in operation of and access to transport facilities and services, quote, unquote. The fact of the matter is that the Current suppliers in the road freight market come in all sizes, shapes, nationalities, race groups, and business formats. There is no obstacle whatsoever to entry to the market. There, in fact, is 
so little obstacle that quality is gravely endangered. But that is a, that's a separate issue and certainly nothing to do with economic regulation. Nick Poiré, thank you very much for joining us on the CRA channel. Quick reminder that the CRA is active on Twitter. Our handle is at center underscore risk. Do give us a follow there if you're on Twitter. My name is David Ansara. This is the CRA. Until next time, take care.